All candidates participating were asked the same questions and were given the same amount of time to respond. This video was filmed by QAC TV and the questions were selected by editor Angela Price with reader input. You guys are good. We're good? All right, I'm ready. My name is Hannah Combs, reporting for the Bay Times and Record Observer. With us today is Jim Coulter, who is the Democratic candidate for Commissioner District 3. Thank you for joining us today, Jim. Thank you, Hannah. It's good to be here. So we're going to take two minutes and let you introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about yourself and why right. you'd like to be commissioner. Great. Um, I'm a, uh, an Army veteran. I uh, served uh, as a sergeant in the 3rd Armored Division. I went to school under the GI Bill, uh, earned a, a BS in Business Administration and an MBA in Finance. Uh, once I graduated from school, I uh, went into the corporate environment, spent a lot of time as, uh, in finance, managed large budgets, developed financial systems, um, left the uh, the corporate environment, uh, my wife and I formed a, a real estate company which we ran successful. Um, just sold it about four years ago. I think the measure of, uh, of a small business is to be able to succeed and, and sell the business. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, uh, the Democrats called and asked me if I'd like to, uh, to, uh, to run as commissioner and I, I gladly accepted because I think it's um, a great way to serve. And uh, my family has always, always served. We, uh, I worked uh, throughout my career, I worked uh, as a volunteer for homeowners associations and Habitat for Humanity and uh, served on the board of a, of a small hospital. So we've always, we've always served. We're in the military, of course, that's the service to the United States. And this gave us a, a chance to give back to the community. Very good. What are your, what are the biggest issues that you feel are facing the county uh, coming up this next term? Yeah, I, th I think there are three major issues that, that, uh, that will get my focus. And when we go around and we talk to, uh, to people, and I've probably shook the hands of maybe a thousand people at this point, uh, I think that they, they, they come down to traffic as a, as a major issue, as well as, uh, as overdevelopment. And, and education is a pretty significant issue that we need to we need to pay attention to. Okay, we're going to take a minute to kind of run through these next questions, and the first is the comprehensive plan that's going to be updated in this next term. Yes. What is your vision for that plan? Well, the comprehensive plan involves everybody, uh, community associations, uh, um, the the government through the planning commission, uh, the individuals the developers, the, the uh, environmentalists, all get together and spend thousands of hours talking about and, and, uh, of these issues. So the vision really is to, to get the input from all these individuals and come up with a consensus of where our, our, uh, our county is going. Mm -hmm. What provisions do you think you might want to make to provide for senior citizens? That's a growing population now in our county. The, the senior citizen population is a, is a growing population and it's a pretty significant group of people. Um, I think that uh, health care is important to them. I think that we have a wonderful uh, health care facility uh, in Graysonville that we need to support that facility. It needs to grow. It needs to be, add some beds for patient care. I also think that we have a wonderful uh, EMT group of people one of the best group of EMTs in the, in the state, very well trained. We need to make sure that those people are taken care of. Good. We are talking about the school system request for funding above maintenance of effort. Right. As a county commissioner, how do you anticipate handling that response for funding over maintenance of effort? Well, I, thi I think you really have to look at uh, how the school system is funded. Uh, maintenance of effort is only a benchmark. So you really have to, to, uh, to look at how the funds are, are managed and, and what the funds are for. So I would approach the, the budgeting process, not as a process to, to measure against maintenance of effort, but what are we spending for what programs? We need to, uh, we need to evolve our, our, our education system, our public education system, to make sure that we've got computer science progr programs, uh, in both middle school and high school, we need to 
look at our language programs, our math programs. So it's more of an issue of what are we spending our money in, in, on and, in, and what are we getting for it. Mm -hmm. Balancing future development and protecting the environment, especially the Bay, is also a concern here in the county. How would you propose trying to balance those two? Yeah, it's a complex issue and one that is is always addressed in the in the uh, in the uh, ten year comprehensive plan. We always need to contemplate when we do development um, the environment and traffic, both huge issues. Uh, once once we've developed once we are in development of a property, we have to make sure that stormwater management is carefully monitored. We can't have a situation like we had at Four Seasons where we didn't do a good job of stormwater management uh, and, and monitoring of that issue. Mm -hmm. And that kind of leads us into economic development and business growth also within the county. How would you perceive maybe fostering business growth in the county? I think that one of the things that I've discovered in, in, in the, the budget process is that we actually reduced the amount of money we spend on economic development by about 50% this year. So I think the first thing you have to do is re return those funds to the economic development team. We have to hire a strong economic development manager and we have to work with the Chamber of Commerce in concert with the Chamber of Commerce to, to aggressively seek uh, uh, economic development in the county. Very good. Residents in the northern part of the county often say that they don't feel like they get the same level of service as the rest of the county does. How would you respond to them? Well, I think, I think there's something to that. I, th I think that uh, we need to commit to the county to, to, uh, to support those people. Uh, so one, of, one of the big issues is uh, broadband access. Um, we've, we've got to get broadband access to the, the, uh, the northern part of the county. Are there any issues or topics that are uh, near to you that we haven't covered that you'd like to talk about? Well, I, I, I think the three issues are, are very, very important. That is, uh, make sure that we, we plan properly for the future. We can't have another four seasons. We can't have that kind of project. That project is too big and too close to the water. I think that, uh, that we need to look at, make sure that our kids' school is funding, funded properly, that they should get the best education that, that we can afford to give them. And I think traffic is, is an issue that everyone talks about. And if we work with the state and aggressively push the state for permanent solutions, for, for solutions, just, just a quick moment. When you look at our traffic situation, you see that in Denton, the state built a bypass around Denton. In Easton, they built a bypass around Easton. In Salisbury, they built a bypass around Easton. But they've done nothing to really uh, 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 resolve the issue of, of overflow traffic onto our local roads. There are some solutions out there. We need to aggressively push the state to get those solutions in place. Mr. Coulter, thank you very much for joining and we're happy to have you here today. Thank you, Hannah.